Uh, so today we are talking about the uh, NVIDIA Flare. First, let's talk about the data. Uh, everybody knows uh, if we are doing the deep learning, machine learning, AI, data is so important. Without data, we basically cannot do anything. The model cannot be trained. Uh, we basically just sit there and uh, just see the computer idling. However, uh, when we talk about data, data has some kind of uh, properties. Sometimes uh, a different location has different data or a different machine generate different type of data. In medical imaging system, uh, sometimes we see Siemens CT generate a little bit different uh, image dynamics, dynamic range uh, from maybe GE. So this is basically sometimes we need to look into if we need to train different data from different uh, sources. And uh, uh, for the Pulsity. Basically, if uh, we have a lot of people, each one of them has a little bit of data, but they also want to train a model, usually it's very hard for them. They might need to collaborate together to collect all the data to a centralized place. However, it may not be so uh, easy to do that. One possible scenario is uh, those people may not want to, their data to be transmitted outside their organization, or maybe this is a regulatory uh, limit that they cannot move their data out of the country boundary. It's uh, all from our customers. Our customers mentioned different uh, uh, usage for the data, but they cannot just say, put all the data together in one location to train the model. And for the privacy, this is even more uh, restricted, uh, like uh, in hospital, they have a lot of data. If two hospitals want to train a model, a unified model, but they data cannot be exchanged because uh, there are a lot of review or information required or committee review, sorry. Okay, so that means it's uh, not very practical for them to say, okay, let's put the data together in one location and the both of us can access it and train the model. And for the FSI, it's a financial service industry. Oh, their regulation is even uh, difficult to overcome because uh, it's uh, really, really hard to say uh, two different organization exchange or share some sensitive information. HC is the healthcare. So when we face this kind of issues, but we are from the machine learning, deep learning, how do we overcome those strange or difficult situation to really, really get all the data we want and the train the model we need? So this come, sorry, this come with the federated learning. Federated learning basically say, train your model near your data set. Original people say, move your data set to the training location. So every data set come to one place and train it. Very, very efficient. But uh, federal learning say, okay, if your data cannot move, how about uh, just train the model there and move your model around so that uh, all the model trained can, um, through an algorithm, some kind of algorithm, and uh, you can generate uh, one single or best models. And uh, this is how NVFlare uh, created. It's an open source SDK for federal learning. It's a Apache 2.0, so it's open source. You can just download, clone it, and uh, uh, submit your PR. We welcome every type of PR. And if you have a question, you just submit an issue or questions. We will, we will be ha very happy to answer it. And uh, it basically enables distributed multi-party collaborative learning. So we are just not just to say NVFlare is used for N NVIDIA only. Anybody who want to use it, even you are in maybe US, and uh, you have uh, some um, partner or some kind of uh, 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 client in different countries, they want to train a model, you can just use it, no problem at all. And uh, it's a uh, production scalability. It uh, has been used, uh, uh, we use this system to publish a paper in Nature Medicine. Uh, it's on the COVID x-ray 
uh, classification example. Basically, that case uh, include uh, consists of, uh, I think, uh, uh, 11 countries and the different hospitals. Because at that time, uh, if, uh, just one country with their uh, X-ray, maybe not enough, and the people want to collect enough data. And uh, it's basically domain uh, agnostic. It's basically, if you want to use PyTorch, fine. TensorFlow, fine. XGBoost, fine. Anything you can think of, like a scikit, learn. Just use it. We, our system does not say you have to use one particular type of uh, deep learning framework or machine learning framework. And uh, it has built-in privacy uh, preserving algorithms. It's a uh, uh, HE and uh, DP. HE is out of box. We basically handle almost every uh, context generation for the HE. And uh, during the training time, we basically make sure your data, your model, when it's sent from the client to the server, it's been protected uh, through the C, uh, HE. So your server side, even it's received the model, it cannot fully decrypt it because it has certain HE protected information. However, the server still can do some arithmetic addition, multiplication on all the models it collected. So basically, it generates a new model with HE protected layers and it can send back to the client. Client has the information to decrypt it to the plain text, all the floating point is needs, and to do the training. And uh, for the uh, DP, we out of box support different type of filters, SVT, uh, Gaussian noise, and the different. And we, if you need to choose your own or implement your own, uh, you just need to add your Python code, very simple Python code, and uh, change the configuration, just one line. Then your system has that DP automatically included. And it's guaranteed that uh, when the client send out the model to the server, it will definitely pass, uh, pass through that, not pass through, it will test that filter with that operations. And when it's come back, there is no need to do the reverse. So we basically have all the uh, necessary parts for industry and our customers. So you don't need to implement everything by, your, by yourself. And uh, one more thing about uh, production ready is uh, we think the security is very, very important. Basically, the server and the client and the, even the, the user that submitted the job need a certificate and the private key. Every communication between the server and the client must be uh, MTLS authenticated. So it's not just uh, one way TLS, it's a mutual. TLS, and we manage the certificate and the private key. And we even can sign all the jobs we submitted to the system. Basically, every information can be signed and uh, encrypted at any participant. This means the server and the client. And we also have a lot of APIs that include, uh, we can use the API to query the system, what's the, how the system is working, how many jobs is currently running, and what's the resource consumption on each node. And we also support different type of workflows and the algorithms. Workflow means uh, if you want to have the fed average, fine, we have that one out of box. If you want to cyclic, basically one client train the result and send it to the next client. Next client take it over and train again. That kind of workflow. That's fine. We also have that one out of box. You just change one line, configuration, it's done. And uh, here is the GitHub location. So for the uh, productivity, in addition to the uh, security side, the certificates and the encrypted communication, we also target our system not only to the real production level, and we also target before the production. For example, the researcher. They want to do a lot of uh, analysis on how their uh, FL algorithm work. Like uh, if uh, they are using cyclic, will cyclic uh, sub, uh, 
serve the purpose that all the model can converge to the same one. If uh, it's, it's too dynamic, uh, then it's not converged, or maybe its chain result is too bad. So we have a simulator. Simulator, basically, you have one single node. You have the job configuration. You just run it through one single command, and it create those clients you want, and start to run the algorithm exactly as you describe. So it's basically try to run the same thing in your local machine with a little bit uh, less resources, but it's okay. Then when you are ready, you think that you're a researcher and then you think this is basically the one you want to deploy. You can deploy it to the entire system because you already verify its work. And the PLC mode is basically the middle layer, no, the middle stage between simulator and the real production. It's a little bit close to the uh, real production. So it will have a better per participant resource control. So it will create a lot of dockers. Each docker you can specify the resource requirements and it will try to see if it's break some kind of a resource limitation. And uh, uh, we also support multi-cloud. Basically, if you want to run it in Azure, no problem. In our uh, SDK, we basically generate those scripts for you. You just run one single command, start .sh dash dash cloud Azure. Then one Azure instance will be launched and the, the system is running over there. And it, it basically just can get the instance, talk to the server. Or if that's the server, your server is ready for other clients to connect. Uh, connect. And the dashboard basically, uh, it's a tool or a application that allow the entire FL study organizer to distribute distribute all the private key uh, certificates and the star key. Star key means all the configuration information easily because everybody can just sign up and uh, put the information they would like to use. And uh, the organizer will just say, okay, I can approve this one and uh, you can download it. And the pre-flight check basically, uh, when you have the system uh, installed, you want to try if everything is okay, it can talk to the server, it can listen to the port you open, basically it's uh, some uh, tools for you to debug if or troubleshooting your entire environment. So uh, on the left, on the right hand side, that's the exam COVID uh, prediction. Basically, this is the uh, paper we published. So it's uh, basically tell you the ND flare is not just a, a toy project inside a company that served the only purpose of that company. It can be used for the entire world. And uh, I don't know how many authors, but uh, it's a lot. And uh, there are different uh, organizations, and they all use uh, NV Flare to do their uh, federal learning. And it's uh, very flexible, and it's uh, very easy to adapt. Uh, you can see some of them are not just uh, uh, research style. Some of them even has some type of uh, uh, solution provider stuff. Basically, their customer want to have some feature for their federal learning. And uh, the solution provider basically try to see what's the current FL uh, solution fit their goal. And uh, they usually find out uh, for the flexibility, for the producti productivity ready, production ready, and uh, for other uh, uh, requirements, and if they usually fit all the purpose they want. And uh, uh, let's talk about the security because it's uh, when we have the data, the model trained on one client, usually that model saw the data. And the model basically can also, the model basically can, can tell you about the, uh, the data it saw. So one problem is if the model just trained on one single data point, and that model sent back to the server. And the server has malicious user. The server can just get the model, do a gradient inversion, and get the, the, the model, uh, get the data back. So this is very important. So we basically say we would like to enforce a rule that any model that is sent out must pass through 
uh, must go through the filter that we established or defined by the uh, project admin or researcher. And we also have uh, different uh, authorization levels. That means uh, each user has different permission to perform different operations. Some user has a higher level of permission. They can submit a job. They can abort a job. They can kill a job. They can grab all this information back. But some of the user may just can see the log. And the, the user, those users cannot uh, see other information. And they cannot see other organizations' information. Or, they, or even they cannot check other organizations' system on the training result. We also have a, a site-specific authentication. This basically say each site, when it needs to run a job, that job needs to be authenticated. The job actually comes from the job submitter. The job submitter belongs to one specific organization. It will embed its own signature into that job. So if one client say, I don't want to run any job from the other organization, that site can say, I will reject that job. So it's very, very detailed on all the authentication and authorization. And the secure client to client basically is, uh, I can submit uh, a job, uh, I, can, I can upload a model to the server, but the server has no decryption key because that model is encrypted uh, with uh, the target site mm, public key. So only the target site's private key can decrypt that information back. So this is uh, basically client to client. Any participants involved in the transmission cannot really see the model itself. And this is basically the uh, result we, we analyzed and the researchers basically check the information and see it's really work and our implementation supports those paper and uh, get the uh, similar or uh, roughly same result. Okay, for the customization, a uh, lot of time the customer would like to use our system with their own infrastructure. If uh, some customers say, we will have a specific communication mechanism, maybe we do not, we do not allow the HTTPS, we do not allow gRPC, we do not allow the direct TCP connect connection. They may say, oh, the only way to communicate between two nodes is through, for example, Redis. Then lots of the current existing FL framework could not support that immediately or out of box. Even people want to add that feature, it's become very, very hard because they, they need to like remove a lot of codes and add a lot of one and become very, very proprietary and very unique. But in our case, let's go to this one. It's basically say, we have different layers, handle different uh, responsibility. On the very bottom one, it's a very good example. This is gRPC driver, HTTP driver, TCP driver, SOC driver. Each driver exposes same API. And uh, if people want to have the Redis driver, they can just implement the Redis driver, and uh, all the upper layer will behave the same. There is no change at all. So we already have this type of uh, implementation and uh, uh, project. It's basically get a very good result. Then we, we are well joking that uh, if some people want to implement an email driver, it's possible because you just need to make sure the API is the same. Then you can use the email to do the FL. And uh, this is part about if uh, the researcher would like to use totally different deep learning framework, and if they have uh, some kind of other ideas about how to do the uh, training because the data is not uh, parallel, because most likely the, the data and the label 
are at the same location. This data set point has the label at this location, so they can train the model without problem. However, sometimes the label and the part of the data is in a different or feature. It's in different location, and we we'll need a diff uh, uh, one location on some data part, and uh, the other location with the label and the other part, other part of the data, like a two head training. So that is a, a vertical training, vertical FL. For that, we also have the example in our uh, GitHub repo. So you can easily just grab that one and see, oh, it's quite simple. It's just use this kind of configuration and with maybe two or three Python calls, you have that vertical FL. And the uh, XGBoost, no problem. Like learn, no problem. Archivist, NLP, no problem. So all of these are either out of box or we provide the examples and you can just easily try it and run it. Okay, so let me. Right, uh, thanks uh, Isaac for introducing MV Fleur. So um, we have, other than the features, we do have all these other uh, new features that's coming up. Um, so, how to convert a centralized uh, ML or DL to an FL setting, and then uh, also to the stream of uh, LLM. Uh, how do we support that, and how do you, as Isaac show, how do you train, um, let's say, an LLM with prompt learning or uh, parameter efficient fine tuning? How do you do that? And they also support uh, experiment tracking. You can send back your matrix, your losses using, you know, ML flow, weights and biases, uh, or Monai. And then also uh, as the uh, customizable or building components, uh, we do already have some of these implementations in our repo. So Swarm Learning and Vertical uh, Federated Extra Boost and Graphic Neural Networks. Uh, and these other features also coming up as well. All right, so let's talk a bit about um, how do you uh, transform um, your ML DL centralized uh, application to FL? So right now, we have already implemented these use cases. And then, um, so one is lightning, and the second one is decorator. And third one is the general use case. Now, right hand side, you see these uh, different APIs. So, Let's directly take a look. So each of those cases has actually um, respond to how many code uh, you need to change. Because um, Lightning, um, as some of you might know, so it already has a predefined structure um, like this trainer. And then what people would usually do is the you know the black code um, for for you um, familiar with deep learning. You define a model. You define this data set, and then you declare this trainer is a lightning specific, and then you just call fit, test, and predict. And then in order for this code to be run in an FL setting, you just need to add these highlighted lines. So you import our um, client API, and then you patch the trainer. And then um, because the data setup it might take uh, a lot of time, so we have this uh, loop to wrap around so that you know each round you will just fetch new model here, and then you just run this local training uh, for each round. And then uh, let's take federated average as an example. And every round you finish, the locally trained model weights will be sent back, weights or weights difference, you know, ap after applying those filters, will be sent back to the server to do aggregation. And then finally, you get that global model. So that's that. Uh, for aligning, you just need to import, you patch trainer, and then this validate, it's, uh, it's validating the, the model you receive, how that perform on your local data set. So this is not necessary, but then we add it here. And for the case of decorator, that is, if you already formulate your training um, structure or code like this, you have a train method, and then you have an evaluate method, you just need to import the client PI, and then you initialize it, and then you add this. Um, decorator, and then once you add this decorator, um, your first argument will gonna replace it with the global model when you call it, and then in the end, you just need to uh, specify 
you need to construct this object that you want to send this back to the um, server side to do the you know aggregation or whatever algorithm you choose. Uh, in a typical case, people just gather uh, all these model difference, model weights from different clients, uh, and then in the server they do the aggregation so that they can uh, they do the average of all, all those weights so they decide which step to take uh, for the deep learning application. And then for evaluate, you just add this decorator and then. Um, you need to have this argument, and then we will just um, replace this behind uh, with the global model for each round, and then you will use that global model to do your evaluation. So you see here, um, while this is running, you just get the global model, and then you evaluate on it, and then you train on it. And then it'll, 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 uh, on the server side, if you configure the workflow, it will just run. Uh, the, in the federal uh, setting. And for the general DL use case, uh, you'll see that if you know you are not using uh, Lightning, you're not format your uh, training code in, in certain function, you can just do it as flat um, code or simple code as you want. You just declare this model here, right? So you uh, we import the client API and then we do the init here. And then again, we wrap it in this while loop, uh, this is not necessary, it's only if, uh, if your data setup takes a lot of time, then you do this. And then you receive the model, you see um, this one way, you just get the global model parameters, you load it to your, your model, and then you do the normal training, and then in the end, you compose this uh, um, object we want you to send back uh, using your trained model weights, and you send it back. All right, so that's, that for the uh, ML2DL uh, conversion. And we'll also uh, talk a bit about the, uh, the example that we have uh, using uh, Nemo, is, which is uh, Vindia's uh, NLP uh, library. It provides some pre-trained models and then uh, a predefined uh, training workflow for LLM as well. So uh, in this slide, we're gonna talk about the, how do you do prompt uh, tuning. So. Uh, we, we have this pre-trained large language model, and then for prompt tuning, what we do is that we add this prompt encoder um, and to learn uh, additional uh, prompts that we want uh, for this model. And then so for this prompt tuning uh, in federated learning a scenario, what we do is that each client, they will have their own data, and then these LLMs are come from pre-trained, and what, what, what we would do is that each of them will have this prompt encoder, and then on the server side, we just get the weights or the weights difference of these prompt encoder, and then average them uh, to get a new weights, and then it just goes iteratively like this. Um, we also have this other example just to showcase that oh, you can do, oh, you can do things like this. So. Uh, other than prompt tuning, you can also do uh, supervised fine tune with your large model. You can just fine tune the whole uh, 1.3b uh, model, and then these are just different data sets. And then we just showcase that uh, it actually worked. And then these are different matrix. Um, we have these uh, Hella Swag, uh, Piqua, uh, Why Not Grid these scores, and then uh, we, we already uh, published it in our repo, so you can check it out there. And then we have more examples that are using different algorithms than we already have, uh, Fed Average, Fed uh, Prox, Fed Opt, with different uh, data sets, you can just check it out there, and then we can do some demos <laughs> in the end, very fast. Maybe. Okay, so that's just to show very fast. Okay, this is one. Basically, it's a. Uh, um, sorry. Maybe I need to. Okay, maybe we'll just show this one. This is a simulator. It's on this Mac. So basically, you can just run it. And the same job, you can just submit it. So it's a live demo. It uh, installs any flare and uh, run the example, basically, you just got the result. So even on your MacBook, you can start to try it. Okay, thank you. <laughs>